Make sure you share, subscribe to my channel, upload, make a comment down below. Make sure you hit that like button. It's very important that you hit the like button. Can you believe it is the 13th? He wanted to shut nothing down, but open everything up before Easter. What day before Easter? There's states still not closed and don't want to close and still playing a game with people's lives. It's not cool. Can you believe this dude? The governors are following along with the plan. Check this out. One of the states that has decided um, that it doesn't need a stay-at-home order, at least it's said that the, where the governor has decided that her state doesn't need a stay-at-home order, and the president has said that's fine, be sure that's fine. One of those states that still does not have that kind of order is the great state of South Dakota. Uh, the governor there is named Christy Nome. She's a Republican. The coronavirus is real. The city in South Dakota is Sioux Falls. Here's some images from a, a drive-by protest, a socially distant protest by people in Sioux Falls who came out to show support for people who work at a local meat processing plant. There, There's a facility in Sioux Falls owned by Smithfield. It's a pork processing plant. They process uh, about 4 to 5% of the pork that is sold in this entire country. They've got about 3,700 employees at that one facility in Sioux Falls. That plant had its first employee test positive for coronavirus on March 26th. And when they learned of that first test, the other people who work in that plant were concerned, as you would be, in, in, in part because a lot of that work inside that plant is done in very close quarters. In a lot of cases, you are shoulder to shoulder with your fellow employees doing what can be very tough physical labor. After asking for better conditions and protective equipment inside the plant and the community turning out to support those demands from the people who worked there, Smithfield did close the plant down last week for three days. They said they wanted to give everything a good cleaning. They said they wanted to see what they could do about putting barriers between employees and supplying masks, anything else they could do to try to keep people safe. But again, they had their first positive case on March 26th. Employees were, were upset. They got support from the community expressing what they were upset about. They had the three-day shutdown last week. They had their first positive case on March 26th. Now, as of today, they've got 293 positive cases at that one plant. And so now, uh, the plant is closed down indefinitely. Now, now, I should mention that that 293 cases figure from that one plant, that was announced yesterday. Uh, the Argus Herald in Sioux Falls now says that the number of cases associated with that one meat processing plant is actually considerably higher. It's now 350 cases. They've got 868 cases in the whole state of South Dakota, 350 of them associated with one meat processing plant. Can you believe one it? Workplace. Can you believe it? The governor is not issuing a stay-at-home rule. The South Dakota Medical Association has asked for a stay-at-home order. Governor will not do it. Today, the mayor of Sioux Falls asked Governor No to please do it. Please do it at least for the counties around Sioux Falls, where they now know they have this very large cluster of cases. Turning a blind the eye. The window, though, of time for mitigation is certainly dwindling right now. Uh, the Sioux Falls area has seen a very rapid spike in the last several days, and um, quite honestly, we're growing increasingly concerned about um, the need to mitigate that spike before um, it overwhelms our hospitals. Hospitalizations are low. Yes, they are low. Hospitalizations are a trailing indicator of COVID. Okay? So, you don't act once your hospitalizations get high. So I want to I want to share a little bit of data. These are some peer cities that we kind of look at in terms of population, um, in terms of um, some are geographically similar to us. But some are you got everything from Tallahassee to Laredo, Texas. It's a total number of cases, um, and this is the cases per thousand. And Sioux Falls is highlighted in yellow, and this should be concerning to our community. This is keeps me up at night right now, this number. Um, 
we are obviously the highest among all these peer cities and so our time to act on this is right now so on saturday i did send a formal request to governor no to issue a shelter in place for minnehaha and lincoln counties i feel that based on this and based on a lot of other data that we have the time to act is now if we just take the average doubling rate of all those peer cities i just showed you we'll be here but we are by far outperforming in a bad way our peer cities so if we continue the trend that we've been on the last four five six days we are going to be up here very shortly this is a crippling number to our health care systems okay this is a this is very bad it's a very bad outlook that is why a shelter in place order is needed now it's needed today very emotional it's needed today so mayor of sioux falls south dakota where they just found a cluster of 350 cases among workers at one meat processing plant in that city and again in south dakota there is no stay-at-home order so everybody working at the plant is kind of you know in the wild and they've got 350 known cases there already governor christy gnome so far says no she won't do it she doesn't see any need to have any sort of shelter in place any sort of stay-at-home order why bother uh, she did, however, announce to great self-promotional fanfare today that she's going to spend a whole bunch of state money to do a big South Dakota clinical trial of that malaria drug that the president keeps inexplicably promoting at his press briefings, the one for which there's no clinical evidence of its effectiveness and for which the one other clinical trial and for which one other clinical trial was just halted this weekend because of serious cardiac complications for people taking this drug. But for some reason, the president loves talking about that drug and so does Fox News. And so that's what the state of South Dakota is going to do. They're going to have a big clinical trial of that drug the president likes. She licking his butt without While asking. A large cause. Just rolling with what he thinks. Processing capacity gets shut down indefinitely under the weight of hundreds. And then the whole state is not even taken down. Not even a stay at home order in the state of South Dakota. Can you believe it? The, the mayor of Sioux Falls is asking for one for the counties around Sioux Falls. Please, Governor. Not interested, apparently. Can you believe it? Look at all the people that's sick. That President Trump declared the coronavirus They're going to work in plants. That is a technical thing that has consequences that should have put agencies like FEMA in control of coordinating the national response to that national emergency. But instead, who knows who's in charge or what they're doing. You might remember the actual optics of that declaration of the national emergency a month ago today. That's where everybody was crowded together in the Rose Garden like they were all taking a super tight elevator ride to nowhere. Hmm. Uh, and the president kept shaking everybody's hands and touching the microphone that they were all speaking and breathing into. That's where the president announced that there would be drive through testing sites with major retailers like Walmart and CVS all over the country. They'd be ubiquitous. Yeah, right. Just about to open. Uh, There's nothing later, that's opening. There are less than 10 of those operational in the entire country. <laughs> the federal government was also 10 and it's 50 states. Can you believe it? Be able to get tested in Target parking lots. How convenient is that? The federal government, it turns out, is not actually partnering with Target at, at all. all. Just a lie. Tested in their parking lots. Uh, the president also at that event brought up one CEO uh, who, to his credit, did show the president how to elbow bump him instead of grasping his little hand. President brought that CEO up to say that his company would be rolling out in home testing for people getting at home health services. Another and lie. For people in rural areas. Uh, that's just not happening at all. NPR followed up on that big splashy announcement today. Quote NPR called more than 20 of the company's sites in 12 states. None of them is doing in-home testing. One month following the Rose Garden address, employees at the company's site said they lacked both testing kits and the training to administer tests. Because there aren't any. But still, the announcement sounded so good. That was the same Rose Garden announcement a month ago today where the president said that 1,700 engineers from Google were all working on a nationwide online screening tool that would be rolled out soon. It would tell you uh, whether you should get tested and where you should get tested, and then it would tell you your results. Uh, Vice President Pence said he'd have further details on that. The rollout of that would come within two days. Google never actually worked on that at all 
A related company did do something much smaller in conjunction with the California state government, but that's just for five counties just in that one state. Literally a month ago, there was the president and vice president of the Rose Garden announcing it was rolling out nationwide. Just stay live. also reported on a request that major testing labs made of the White House and of the federal government in conjunction with that same national emergency declaration in the Rose Garden. Testing companies asked the White House for three things now that this was a national emergency. They asked for government funds to build new testing facilities, national standards to prioritize who gets tested, and they asked for government support of the supply chain. Quote, more than a month later, the diagnostic testing labs still have those three requests outstanding because the government hasn't done any of those things they asked for. Still lies. Right now aren't even going up on a daily basis. The number of tests being processed each day in the United States is flat or even down within the last few days over the COVID tracking project. I mean, heard all this talk about opening things back up and what day we're going to be opening things back up. What do you need in order to open things back up? You need to have a whole bunch of stuff in place if you don't want to just go back to putting tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of American lives on the chopping block. All over again. There's no way we can even start to think about opening things back up unless we've got things in place, right? May 1st. Can you believe it? Nationwide testing people are still dying a robust nationwide testing implants big buildings stores easy grocery stores disease. you've got to have contact tracing for people who do turn up to be positive to figure out who else they've come in contact with who also needs to be tested who also needs to have their contacts traced who also you see? especially needs to be isolated you need intense epidemiological surveillance systems in place if you are going to reopen and you know this virus is still circulating among us. We have none of that. None of that. You can't talk about opening things up just because you want things open. You have to have the things in place that will allow you to open things back up without killing thousands of Americans. Oh, it's going to happen. nowhere near any of those things in place. If people do not and stay inside their house... Point. It's not getting better. Sure. It's actually getting worse over time because the federal government over time is not improving their response. This is a three week span. How many testing. people we die? We're not solving the medical supply chain problem on the national level. The federal government is stealing stuff from the states. That's that's their plan right now. That's a bad plan. The states are paying three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times what they used to be paying for some of these supplies. So they're spending that money, and then the federal government is coming in and stealing them. That's how we're dealing with our medical supply chain crisis. Right? Republican governors still don't know, apparently, that they ought to be putting in place stay-at-home orders, even when they've got huge clusters in their largest cities of death they have no idea that means they should put in a stay-at-home order instead what the message they're getting from the white house is that they really ought to try that malaria drug that the president says has fixed everything or will soon can you so believe it that's what they'll work on no I mean, isolation it's not getting better the federal government is not learning the federal government is getting worse the response is getting worse we're going to focus in the next few days on the people whose lives are most on the line because of it. We're going to focus in the next few days on nursing homes, where the federal government is not even counting cases or tracking them, let alone making nursing homes get better at dealing with what is ripping through nursing home populations right now. They're not working on that part of the problem. They are not even counting or tracking those cases. That may cost more American lives than any other thing that's going wrong. So we're going to focus on that over the next few days. We're also going to focus on what we can do if the federal government never does get better. Some governors, particularly in hard hit states, are now starting to realize that the federal government isn't going to spring into action here. And so states are starting to get together in small groups themselves to form slightly smaller subsets of the United States of America basically to try to approximate, to try to artificially imitate what it might be like if there was a national response. Because there still isn't. Can you believe One it? One governor who's trying his best, uh, linking up with other governors, now in very trying circumstances, is going to join us live next. Stay with us.